Good afternoon and welcome to another in our series of Talk Sports, our Saturday sports program. And as indicated, our special guest this afternoon is no stranger to the uh, regional sports media, well, the regional international sports media, particularly cricket. Okay. And um, we'll be having a full discussion with the legendary, the veteran cricket commentator. And I don't like to just say cricket commentator. I like to put it as a sports commentator because um, he will tell you that it's not only cricket. You know, uh, yes, we know him mainly as cricket, but boxing and uh, tennis and sports. Let me just say sports, okay? No other than the legendary Joseph Reds Pereira. Um, let's say good afternoon to Reds Pereira. Good afternoon to you, Reds Pereira. Yes, not Michael. Good afternoon. Nice to see you and hear you. And good afternoon to all your viewers. And happy Saturday to all. And let's all get the vaccination. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you very much for accepting and being on the program. But um, quite an interesting topic um, and timely indeed. As I indicated, we'll be talking about um, West Indies cricket, uh, more so the recent. Uh, World Cup, that's the T T20 World Cup, where uh, West Indies are former champions themselves. And we'll also be looking at the ongoing test series against Sri Lanka, and then the upcoming uh, series against Pakistan, and uh, that's next month, December. And then in the new year, we'll be hitting the new year with the English they'll be touring the caribbean so lots of cricket to be talking about but first of all reds we want to talk and we want to hear from you um your views on the recent uh world cup t20 world cup uh that west indies um uh, participated in and uh, uh did not make it into well what many were expecting that would have been able to defend the world cup title um and certainly i have been reading and most people would have read your comments and while some may agree some obviously would disagree but i know most times you speak from the heart so let's hear what you had to say reds regarding west indies performance in the t20 world cup well i think uh, my my position reflects the regional uh, position um the in, in in a very short sen sentence, they picked the wrong team. It was very evident from the very start of the year when we played Sri Lanka in Antigua uh, that they were on a course that they would not change come what may. And they ended up picking the wrong team. They picked a team that would was a of 32 and, and going further um, right up to Gale at, at, at 40 plus and uh, we just didn't have the mobility we just didn't have the quality of performance in that side uh, that was, was going to take us further um, I think if, if you look at the, um, the CPL the CPL didn't reflect what the selectors actually chose um, they chose a, a very aging team and um, I don't believe that we were uh, too surprised that the one victory came against Bangladesh but yet the very team they picked um, they picked Thomas and head selector Harper said that he will be able to come in and uh, be in the X factor bowling pace uh, take wickets uh, when we need to take. We picked the leg spinner, Hayden Walsh, in a tournament where lots of wickets were taken by leg spinners. They played him in two matches. They played him in two matches, and um, he didn't bowl badly in those two matches. He's probably our best fieldsman himself, and Allen uh, outstanding in the field. So it, it was difficult to, to, to read um, the, the performance of 
Simmons was very disappointing. I mean, he was basically swiping. And uh, I think basically we had a disappointing performance. We had a disappointing performance. Uh, it was wrong for them to carry Gale. Gale had two scores all year, two scores. And um, he, he was carried on, on, on the basis of that. And uh, we had a number of young men who performed very well in um, St. Kitts that should have gone. And I will sum up by saying we should have taken a younger team to the World Cup because the next World Cup is October of 2022, which is not that far away. And we should have used this World Cup uh, to, bled, to, to blend and expose those players so they would have had a World Cup under their belt so when they got to Australia, uh, they would not um, be inexperienced, etc. Uh, wrong team was chosen, and I think you know, we, we got the result uh, we expected. Yeah, yeah. But going forward, um, you still see the West Indies with... Um, what will I say? Uh, great depth of talent. Do you see that? Uh, I, you made reference to to, to 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 a number of youngsters, but do you see and 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 saying that we picked the wrong team? It means, therefore, that in your view, there were alternatives. Um, there were alternates. There were um, people who you believe um, could have replaced other players. Oh, yes, definitely. I will say great depth of talents. So that, that's probably going too far. Uh, but certainly, in place of Cottrell, I would have had Dominique Drake, for, for, for example. Uh, certainly, it was a major error to have Jason Holder as a reserve. Or Jason Holder as a reserve. Um, the batting of Rutherford um, should have earned him a, a pick. The batting of um, Brooks, of Barbados, should have earned him a pick. The bowling of Smith, who bowled generally fast and bowled with more control than Thomas displayed, fitter than Thomas, um, it, it should have been in. And um, I would think that Romario Shepard uh, should have been in. And, uh, you know, that's based on, on what we saw in St. Kitts, that the selectors said will have a bearing on the final selection. Um, there was no fitness test in St. Kitts. The players were there for one month, Michael. There was no fitness test. Yet we are told that ex-players didn't make the fitness level. There were exemptions. We are the only ICC side will have a a medical fitness policy of exemption. So I think I've said it all. <laughs> uh, well, well, it, 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 it seems as, um, as you um, indicated and you, you maintain that, and you know, summarize it nicely, that the, the bottom line is that the wrong team, you know, was um, selected and sent to the World Cup. But what it is, right, is that you will, you think that the West Indies lacking that, I mean, whether it's Bangladesh, whether it's um, Sri Lanka, I mean, I'm just naming randomly, you know, what it is they're doing that West Indies not doing? Well, I think, um, their development program in, in the various countries you refer to, their coaching program is much um, of a higher standard. They are bringing on players. I mean, if you look at the Sri Lankan side, Michael, that came here and started in Antigua, that Sri Lanka side was rebuilt when they got back home. Right? They introduced young players, they introduced uh, a number of, of players across the board. And, um, you know, we haven't done that. Um, there, there, there is a question mark um, to, to our 
our coaching. There must be uh, questions must be asked about the coaching. And I think what's happening in Sri Lanka now, I'm not running ahead of your program. What will happen in Sri Lanka now, uh, what's been happening throughout 2021, is that our batsmen are not, and even our bowlers are, are not being prepared properly uh, to deal with, with conditions, to deal with, with, with attacks of, of a varying nature. We haven't brought on our players where other people have brought on uh, the, 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 their players. But I, um, I, I think you were taken to task by one commentator um, regarding your comment where you um, you asked for the heads of um, the, I think the coaches and and, and selectors at all. Um, <laughs> do you think you went a bit too far, Reds, or you maintain that um, you know that someone must pay the price? Well, I think that the proof of the pudding is in the eating. What the coaching staff have produced, what the coaching staff have produced. I think the Bangladesh victory. Tunnel on the bracket, a lot was read into. We re the, the the selectors and, and and people in general, I think, got carried away with that Bangladesh Tunnel victory. Yes, it, it was welcome, but I think it wasn't something where we sat back and realistically said, "Hold on, let's take this, let's take this for for what it's worth." And straight away, you, I mean, and there were heroes. There were heroes that they came back to Bangladesh. But the flaws are, are starting to show. If you can point out what this coaching staff have done, what the coaching staff has done to improve our performance, to improve our batting performance, to improve our bowling performance, um, I'll be happy to hear from you, Michael. I mean, the track record... Um, I mean, you you take football, the Premier League, uh, Serie A. I mean, if managers and coaches are not producing, they go, right? And how long are we going to wait until we use... I mean, you have a batting coach in Sri Lanka now that nobody knows. You have Desmond Haynes sitting in, 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 in Barbados, and we haven't used them. Why aren't we using Desmond Haynes? Uh, and that's just one example. You know, why are we not using people uh, who have served us well in the past? People with a track record. I mean, am I being wrong to 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 say, hold on, uh, what has Pollard uh, produced? What has Roddy Eckrich produced? What has the batting coach produced? The batting coach has no track record, none. And if you compare um him to the other batting coaches and just look at the just look at the world cup when you look at the uh, the enclosure and you're seeing the resources of people with ideas people who can talk to players and, and motivate them there is just not that coming from our coaching staff okay and you said the roles of the selectors coaches and captains should know uh, should now all be officially scrutinized as a means of ensuring that such a disaster is never again repeated. Why? Because of, of, of the selection policy we, we, we have had. Because of the, of the selection policy. Um, you know, I think basically um, I am disappointed in, in, in Roger Harper. I don't think that Miles Bascom, who had a couple of first-class matches, is really qualified uh, to, to become a selector, right? I'm not saying that a, a player you know, with a strong first-class background can't be a selector. Um, but I think the, the general feeling is that Harper has been stubborn, has been inflexible, 
Um, and I think basically his ability to explain the selections have not helped him at all, have not helped him at all. Um, you know, we, we, we seem to be picking the wrong sides continually all year, all year. I, I want to make a point. When we played the last test match here against South Africa in St. Lucia, the focus was on the 2020 team for over a month. For one month, you and I didn't know what was happening with our test squad. Were they bringing them together and asking Gus Logie or Desmond Haynes, you know, our resource people with Unimon, to work with them in the meantime, right, in a special camp before we headed off to Jamaica. That, Michael, was not done. When we got to Jamaica, there was one month, one week correction, where nothing happened with the players. Our preparation have been really, really um, disappointing, Michael. Disappointing. Disappointing. So in going forward, um, who would you like to see the back of then? Um, certainly, um, it, it, I know Pollard is one, uh, based on what you have said, Gail, um, Simmons, I, and I think a lot has to do with, you know, an aging team, an aging makeup. Um, Wait, Michael, you're agreeing with me, Michael. You're no, agreeing with well, me. Well, I mean, yes, well, it's, it's a fact that, you know, they're aging, you know. So I'm trying to find out. Who are the players you would like to see the back of and probably those you would like to see into the four? Well, it's interesting to see that they have gone in the right direction. If you look at the team that is going, the teams that is going to Pakistan, that is the kind of makeup, not totally, not totally, but that's the kind of makeup that we should have had going to the World Cup, right? All of a sudden now, they're starting to change course. They're starting to change course because of the reaction of commentators, not only myself, I, I, I'm one of many. They are starting to change course because of the reaction by Caribbean people. They're starting to change course, Michael, because of the lack of success. And I think they might not admit it, but they got the wrong makeup in the World Cup. They're now trying to make adjustments. But, you know, you, you, you look at the squad. Well, I mean, Pollard is, is the captain. Nobody expects him, him to go. Um, not too sure that we saw brilliant leadership. He didn't have a great World Cup as captain. Um, but you, you look at that squad, um, Sheldon Cottrell. Where are we going with Sheldon Cottrell? You, you've got a young man called Drix. He's the future. We could have found another another person in place of, of, of Cottrell. Um, are, are you really, you know, you, you, you're happy that you're starting to see change, but you're not. Not too sure if they're not sticking to some of, of, of the old heads. Once upon a time, Reds, the issue of money may have been a prop, may have been, you know, among reasons. But as it is now, West Indies cricketers are probably among the highest paid professional sports men in the Caribbean. So it appears that money is not so much an issue. Um, so therefore, the question will be now, um, what are some of the fundamental issues facing our cricketers in the region? Well, I think basically we haven't had a, a four-day season. And I welcome the fact I read where I think Barbados is about to start uh, legends named after Sir Gary Sobers and Wesley Hall, Charlie Griffith and Sir Gordon Greenwich. Grenada is just about to have three best versus the rest matches. 
um, I think in the in December. So I'm happy that the first class season is coming back because when you look at the, the white ball game in the world, it is people of a test background, of a first class background, the fundamentals uh, that was developed in first class cricket and then test cricket, who are making the runs. You know, you look at the Pakistan captain, Babar Zan, you know, he is not looking to swipe. He's playing normal cricket. You, 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 you look at Kohli, all normal cricket. Um, you, I, I, you look at, uh, at the New Zealand captain, good orthodox shots. Well, this policy of going hard and hitting the ball, and uh, that's the way we bat. I mean, you know, all that has got to change. You can play white ball cricket and you don't have to look to hit sixes just about every other ball, Michael. So I think basically um, I'm happy that the white the four-day game is coming back. I hope they find a sponsor because it's a great drain on the West Indies board. Four-day cricket is a great drain. You have to look after travel. You'll have to look after accommodation, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I think our white ball strategy in general needs to be changed. Um, we can't keep telling, uh, I mean, you, know, you hear that um, dot balls doesn't matter. We, we, we can make up, you know, that policy has got, has got to go. There's certainly got to go. And, you know, you have people in that World Cup squad who was defending, who was defending that, you know, dot balls doesn't matter. We had a huge amount of dot balls in, in Sri Lanka, over 350. We in turn in over the strike. We in looking to play with soft hands. We looking to hit it straight to cover, straight to mid wicket. You know, there, 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 there are a number of factors. And in general, I think there is too much 2020 cricket. It's spoiling our game, Michael. I'm not a qualified coach, but I think that is the general feeling. You know, yes, people have to earn. You've got to be realistic. A cricket life is, um, you know, up to a certain age. People have to look after themselves and their families and beyond. But other countries are not playing their senior players. Players who are going away, I understand. Players who finish you with international, I understand. Um, but I think basically a lot of other countries, their contracted players are saying, I'm not going to the IPL. I'm staying to concentrate on, 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 on my own country's program. That is not happening very often. And I, too much white ball cricket, Michael, too much. I, I mean, surprisingly, Captain Poller was calling for another CPL instead of in fact, focusing on more first class cricket so that people can learn to bat, you know, learn to use their feet, learn to sweep. We are not sweeping in, 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 in Sri Lanka, you know. The Englishmen beat Sri Lanka 2 0, and Lawrence, Root, and Bairstow swept their spinners successfully. If you look at the New Zealand uh, innings against India, although they collapsed, their openers were sweeping the spinners. That comes back to your batting coach. It can, comes back to, to preparation. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I, I still want you to develop um, because I know that um, there will be those who will agree and disagree on the issue of too many T20 cricket being played. Give particular reasons, Reds, if you can be specific and give reasons why you think it's not helping in the development of cricket in the West Indies. Well, let me ask you, <clears throat> I, I, will, I, I will respond, but I want you at the end of it to disagree or agree with me. Because as the presenter of this program, you have to have a view also. You know, it's not just putting me under pressure. 
Yeah, but 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 you you um I I consider you as an expert. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, yeah, but you, you can but disagree. Yeah, yeah. I and and when you develop it and and yeah. and based on that, yes, I will um I will let you know. Yeah, thanks. And I, see I some, say some folks saying spot on already. Some folks listening saying spot on. Right. Yeah. I will say that too much white ball cricket affects technique. Too much white ball cricket affect technique. Right? The Sir Vivian Rich's side, the Sir Clive, Ro Clive Lloyd side, they were test players, first class players, and they played the shorter format and uh, they played normally. The white ball game, especially, I mean, I, I, I sometimes shudder to see on the 19 playing the, the, the shorter format. I mean, that, that is, you know, really uh, spoiling, spoiling the, uh, a young player very, very early. And we wonder why all this talent that appears at 19 and 21 and 22 don't go on to play uh, at the highest level and be successful. In short, I feel that although white ball cricket is a money spinner, I am not hiding my head in the sand because more people go to white ball cricket than any other format. Although test cricket to me is the best game to watch. It's a real test, a test of skill. I think too much white ball cricket all over the world. And there are too many, there are too many. I mean, you, sometimes, Michael, you can hardly catch up uh, as, as someone who will go on cricket info and, and check what's happening. I mean, already, um, you know, already in, in Australia, they are promoting the Big Bash. Already we see the New Zealand, I can't remember the name that is coming up, more white ball cricket, right? Now, if you have the basic fundamentals, um, you don't have to probably get too worried in Australia or in New Zealand because they, are, they grow up on a structure in the states, in, in the various parishes, um, to, to learn the game properly. We are rushing into the white ball game, and we are producing technically flawed um, players. Well, I agree to, um, I agree to make... <laughs> To give my view <laughs> after you yeah and I, I agree with what you're saying and my only concern was that red is that um even though you do because there are other countries that you name whether it's australia um south africa england where they do play um lots of t20 cricket but probably i believe it's more structured you know and um and and to the extent to that, I, I think that the players are more disciplined. Their players are more disciplined. I, I get the impression that um, West Indies cricketers are all over the place, you know, and uh, hopping from one to the next, you know. Yes, you alluded to the fact that it is money making, and some of them see it as, uh, you know, an opportunity to make money. And, you know, you can't fault them for that. But when it comes to the whole development, of um cricket it, it must be something structured and it must be something structured from the point of view of the cricket west indies and the you know the territory <clears throat> and if i can interject michael mm -hmm. a lot of those players from the other countries do not leave their own national um structure right go yeah. on and play ipl i mean you're on you can find records where people are saying, I'm not going um, to IPL. I'm staying to work on my game. Uh, we we are, are, are not in a position where we, we we are seeing that. You know, we are seeing that. I mean, Jason Holder is not going to Pakistan. I understand why he's not going to Pakistan. Because he's physically, mentally tired. He's been in um, the bubble for a very long time. But you don't see our players say, well, look, we have a test series coming up um, against England in 2022. I want to stay 
and focus on the four-day game. You know, I will look forward to the day where I see West Indies players uh, saying that. If a West, Indian, a West Indian player is nearing his end or is fine, and he wants to go off and play in a Pakistan T20 or Sri Lanka or where, I have no difficulty with that. But the main core of your your squads that make up your your your, your, your squads, um, they they must have a a commitment to the West Indies board and the West Indies game. And again, the the um, the point is made that in the in the context of regional sports, professional sports in particular, West Indies cricketers are well paid. Eh? Reds, you um, you have been involved in sports for many years in the Caribbean, and, and not just cricket. Certainly, um, most of the popular sports played in the Caribbean, so you must have an idea of that. West Indies cricketers are, you know, are among the highest paid professional athletes in the region, no doubt. Uh, when you look at probably even compared to a track and field athlete, a professional track and field athlete, um, you know, how many, you know, races can they or how many how, how, how many di diamond league meets he can go to <laughs> that's it that's it you know there's x amount of diamond league meets and not all diamond league meets will have their events etc etc but when you look up the, the cricketer an average cricketer on the international scene can play a couple of test matches one day internationals um t20 internationals plus they can play in the you know the regional you know, tournaments, whether it's CPL, et cetera, et cetera. So quite a lot of money is made in cricket in the, in the Caribbean. Yes. Um, I'm not saying that the, the players are making as, as much as, as the Australians because they've got the industry. You know, you've got the brewery industry, the beer industry in Australia that really helps uh, to allow the players to, to make a, a lot of extra money. There's a lot of um, money being made by the English players. But I think, um, you know, the West Indian players cannot say they're, they're being badly paid. I mean, you know, we, we have some qualified civil servants, some qualified doctors, uh, some qualified people in, in various areas that don't make the money that our, our, our our players are, uh, are making. Now, you can also say, well, those people are going to work until they're 60. So, you know, you, you want to balance it. But, you know, pe people sometimes say jokingly, the players are making more money than our prime ministers, uh, making more money than our permanent secretaries. I, I think the, the, the players need uh, to make their money and use their money use their money properly. I remember at one time, uh, David Holford uh, and a number of people uh, I was trying not professionally to become a company, but were trying to advise players about their earnings, where to invest, which is the safest place to invest. I don't know if that is, is in fact going on now. I think a, a lot of uh, players are on their own in, in terms of where do I put my money? Do I put it in a credit union? Well, the banks are paying 2%, so it, it isn't going to go there. And, you know, the old thing about um, investing in these um, major financial institutions, the higher the interest rates, the higher the returns, uh, the higher the... Um, what should I should say, uh, the higher the possible um, collapse too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, quite indeed, um, and and uh, I assume you know the the whole issue of money management. Eh? <laughs> you know, yeah, like, right. yeah, money management. Um, we'll get back to that, but some comments there. Um, Liz Forsyth is saying the greatest. How I miss this voice. Very lovely to see you and hear you so. Thanks, Mike. Um, well, Liz Forsyth is from Grenada. Uh, my former teacher of many many years. Uh, she's still. 
probably 40 plus years in the teaching business and she's still a teacher um she says for the west indies cricketers of yesteryear made me quite happy although sometimes i nearly got a heart attack with those nail biting finishes however today i have some serious misgivings about them it seems as though the game is more about money rather than loyalty reds and it's something we have been hearing quite a bit throughout the region regarding the whole issue of money so that's why i told you um you know we'll come back on that whole issue with money um that some of the players there's this belief that some of the players put money in front of loyalty well it's it's well documented players in in, in the last couple of years have said they're unavailable for a tour and the next thing you know, they, they are playing in Pakistan or, or they, they're playing in Sri Lanka. Or they, they're playing somewhere else. I mean, and you wonder, hold on. Uh, this man is was unavailable for the West Indies team. Yet, uh, in a matter of, of a week, you, you hear him heading to um, a, a white ball. Uh, and, and I think that is, in fact, disappointing. The amount of times, and I don't want to get calling names, but the amount of times some players have been chosen and have said not available. Um, you know, quite yesterday when we heard the selection, Hetmeyer not available, Evan Lewis not available. Um, I, I'm not too concerned uh, about the fact that Russell is not available because I think uh, there is an injury factor there. Now, you wonder why would Hetmeyer and Lewis, who automatically will make our white ball sides, are, are not available. I mean, in, in Creole, somebody or some man runs the money meat. The money meat. So, you know, I, I mean, you know, that, that is what a man in the street may say. But I mean, you, you have to respect that these people have families, right? They have wives. Um, they have been in the bubble for a very long time. So, you know, you don't rush to judgment when you hear that uh, a man is, has made himself uh, unavailable. Um, and it is, in a sense, true a number of people making themselves unavailable to go to Bangladesh, that a number of people went to Bangladesh and they took the opportunity. So here's hoping that those who actually uh, make themselves available and get selected and go, they take the opportunity as those who went to Bangladesh uh, did. Oh. Uh, yeah. And right, I want us to now move on to the whole issue of the ongoing series against um, Sri Lanka. Um, you know, I know it's taxing on your, it may be taxing on your body because you may have to be um, getting up, well, very early and staying up very late, if you may say that. <laughs> no, I, I, I have a formula. <laughs> I wake up about four. Okay. Right? And then I said, well, look, I, I went to bed at 9.30, fine. I slept at 4, I make a cup of coffee, and, and, and I, I'll watch up to tea, and then maybe the session. That is not as bad as if you try to stay up and see the first ball bowl. Like, you you know. yeah. <laughs> very, very, very tough. Yes, back to Sri Lanka. Yes, um, the, and that opening, that first test. Yeah, well... I think basically you can't beat Sri Lanka with spin. We had three spinners, Hope, who nobody can question. The man have a number of five wickets all and bowl brilliantly. Give the ball some air, turns it. Um, I think that Cornwall, none for 91 in the first. Warrakan, who picked up a couple of wickets, but they were all low order wickets. You want your spinners to make inroads in the top order. And what I'm saying is that it was a shocker, a real shocker, that the, the selection left out Roach, our more senior bowler, the man who leads the attack, not selected. Jaden Seals, the very 
promising West Indies bowler, Rabada like, you know, left out of the squad. And, you know, we go back a long time ago. Our fast bowling, unless you're going to recreate a Valentine or a Sonny Ramadan, or you bring back a Lance Gibbs, or you ask the Garfield Sobers uh, to be young again, our spin bowlers, you know, are, are not good enough. So we, we and I, I'm suggesting that in the next test, we have a quartet of Gabriel, of Roach, of Mares, of, of, of Seals, and Holder with the spinner, with the spinner. I think uh, the, the Sri Lankans will be a little more um, um, vulnerable to our, our fast attack than, than a, a dirt of spin. <laughs> So looking forward to the the, the, the second test, um, what sort of changes you think that the selectors should be looking at? Well, as an armchair selector, <laughs> yes, as well. I, I, I'm like you. Uh, no Cornwall, no Warrican. I'm bringing in the two fast bowlers. The batting will, will stay the same, and I want to give credit to Bonner and the Silver. I was really happy that I got up and, and watched them uh, bat. They played the spin very well. Um, the one missing component is the inability to sweep, which a lot of people have done successfully. I don't have to remind you that Lara got 600 runs against Morley and the Sri Lanka attack. But Bearstow, Root, and Lawrence from England swept the Sri Lankans. Um, but back to the selection, batting will stay the same. I'm not too sure about the availability of Salazano, Mike, mm -hmm. because he had to leave the bubble. He had to leave the bubble to get the MRI. And having to leave the bubble to get the MRI, which proved happily that there was no uh, structural damage, as, as described, um, he may have to re-quarantine now for X days. So whether they would have played him or now, whether he has to re-quarantine and will miss uh, the selection, I do not know. So one can see maybe Blackwood opening again with Braffitt. And again, we come back to the batting, turning the strike over, cutting the dot balls out, playing with soft hands, working the balls, uh, tr through the gaps and um, you know I think I expect what I'm suggesting may have a, a much better looking bowling attack hostility pace using the short ball sparingly um, Roach um, you know coming around the wicket may get the ball to swing and uh, I, I think that the more ex the experience of, of the first test uh, should in fact help uh, the batsmen, with the help of the coaching staff, to overcome uh, some of the difficulties, yeah, some of the difficulties that our batsmen face. I mean, um, we had people being bowled down, playing for turn, playing inside the line, playing outside the line. You know, if you get your left foot across, close to the pad, you can cover the ball. We had someone playing back, playing back, and in, 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 in Sri Lanka, you, you don't play back. There's an old fundamental, if you have a doubt, push out. Get onto the front foot. You know, my general thoughts. <laughs> like that. It, especially in Sri Lanka, right? <laughs> yeah, in Sri Lanka. Yeah. And we got to sweep. We've got to sweep. But you don't start learning to sweep in a matter of a week. It was all about preparation, you know. Yes, the four-day game was washed out, but what was the preparation like, you know? Was our batsman trying to sweep, you know, trying to sweep Cornwall and, and Warwick and, 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 and chase in the nets, you know? The, 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 those, are, you know the, those are things that are very, very relevant in terms of the work of the coaching staff and the preparation.
Yeah, and, and, and talking about that along with the coaching staff and even the point you made earlier regarding when you, you, you mentioned that of um, Desmond Hain, for example, uh, are you satisfied that we in the Caribbean have been able, especially in terms of cricket, have been able to use most of our, um, you know, former cricketers? Um, I, I know Courtney Walsh, for example, is with the... The, the women's um, yep. team, um, mm. and I'm hearing now that they may be, they may have to return from Zimbabwe. They are the, returning. It's being called yeah, off because the, of the, the, the of, of the new variant, right? And um, so, Kotli Ambrose, as a, I think a bowling consultant, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, but do you think that we are in the Caribbean and most so West Indies cricket are using our greats? They are using our former players <clears throat> to the maximum. No, the answer is no. I mean, um, myself and my colleague, Tony McQuart, who co-hosts the, the column that we write every Sunday. And, and of course, we send it to you, Michael. Yes, I, I mean, I when we it. talk about a new selection panel, we talk about Jeffrey Dujon, track record, man who's done it all. We talk about Kenny Benjamin. We are looking for some fresh faces. Tony Gray, you know, um, I, we want to go back and draw on the experience as a selector of Lockhart Sebastian, who has been a wrong when we were doing well. He was a wrong when we beat England in the West Indies. You know, that kind of resource, you know, we want to move away from just um, two selectors and the coach. I don't believe the captain should really have. Um, uh, uh, I say too much. Coach selectors. I think we need to go back to what maybe operated for a very long time in, in the Caribbean. Four or five selectors, and one selector must be at the venue. One selector must be at the venue. So the final 13 that you will give to your captain, and maybe the final 11 is made with one of your chosen selectors so that the discussion and the ideas can be trashed out. Now, you, you uh, what, what's your reaction to some of the names I've called? They're all former players. Oh, and uh, you mean you're asking me for my reaction? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, no, I'm, 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 I'm very supportive. That's why I, I brought it out. Um, to you in terms of that. I'm very supportive. In fact, I it's my humble belief as well that they are not using, I wanted to hear from you as well, but it's my in my humble opinion, they are not using our um, many of our, our greats. You know, um, I believe that more of them should be involved um, and not um, waiting until they're into the 80s and 90s, okay? God forbid. That you know, but I think they still have a, a lot to to offer. It's also nice to see. Um, I, I saw recently Shivnar and Shandapal, for example, participating in a you know in the in the coaching development programs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you know, it's nice to see. And my hope is that they will use people like the Shivnar and Shandapal and others. And now, well. now working with the under nineteen players, players, right? Yeah. and working with the under nineteen. But it's, all right. I, mm -hmm. You, you have opened a can, um, I wouldn't say a can of worms, uh, a can of worms would be maybe open if they decide to give Gail his request of playing a f farewell game. Well, I had I mean, that up my sleeve to ask you free, as well. Free, <laughs> yeah, all right, we'll come to that. Um, but uh, you talk about mentorship. Quite recently, I mean, I call around myself to a number of former players. I asked Mike Finley, have you ever been asked to you know, mentor anyone? No. I asked Andy Roberts, have you been asked to, to mentor anyone? No. Um, the same question I put to Desmond Haynes. Gordon Greenwich was then in England, so I couldn't have asked him. I didn't know how to reach him. Desmond said that uh, there was some initial interest um, through his president, Conde Riley, but he then he, he, he never uh, 
heard anything. Is Kenny Benjamin mentoring anyone? Um, so this whole question of mentorship, I mean, you, you hear it, but where is the follow-up? Where is the follow-up, you know? And, um, you know, if, I mean, in my very humble, humble days at the OECS Sports Desk, one of the things I work on is Jackie Hendricks doing a wicketkeeping seminar in St. Kitts for all the lead, leading three top keepers in, in the Leewards, and Mike Finley doing the same for the top three keepers um, in, in the Windwards. And they, they talked to them, gave them um, the kind of practical advice and things like that. And out of that came Jacobs are uh, using it can work. I mean, w one of the things that I don't believe that uh, is uh, is not taken seriously is our fitness program. We need a more of a. And I know you can't turn the clock back. I don't know what Dennis Waite is doing, but he probably is very happy up the Gold Coast in Brisbane. But we need a man like Dennis Waite, who is a no nonsense man. If 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 Michael. Um, seems to be not working hard enough. Michael, meet me in the lobby at six o'clock, and we'll we, we we will do some special work. Red Spirer, you're not working hard enough. I don't believe that our um, people maintaining our fitness is strong enough. They're too close to the players. If you get too close to the players, and Dennis Wait, and I, I, I was wrong when Dennis Wait was wrong. Dennis Wade was friendly with the players. He had a sense of humor, but he was a no-nonsense person. We have to get a lot more serious with our fitness level. Yeah, well, that whole issue of fitness came up in a discussion, I think, a few weeks ago. Um, oh, I think we just lost Red for a moment. Um, I hope he gets back on. And... The whole issue I, I recall of, um, I think it was Junior Murray, came up as well regarding um, his um, fitness level and how he has been able to, um, you know, to keep himself fit even after all these years. You know, Murray has still been able to keep himself fit. Let me see if I, um, <clears throat> we just lost Reds and let me see if I can get him back because he has a number of other things he wants to, 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 to discuss on that program there. And um, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's quite interesting. He mentioned um, the name Gale, you know, Chris Gale. I know there's something um, on his mind regarding that. Um, so he wants to also speak about that. We also have to speak about the the against Pakistan, you know, the 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 um, the tour against Pakistan. So I, I met I we just lost him and we waited for him to come back on in a, in a moment or two, and um, we certainly will have Reds again. So he will just think back, um, on on the link in a moment, um, and we we should be hearing from. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. Um, so we just lost him there. And, and listen, folks, I know we, um, I, I understood that they have, have been having some problems in the region yesterday. That's what I understood. And initially I thought it was only St. Lucia, um, but it appears that it was region wide and, um, yeah, so Flow Advisors broadband services have been fully restored island wide. And that's a text coming in from Grenada. While I'm speaking about it, it just came up, you know. So it appears that, um, you know, um, they have been having some serious problems. Um, I think, um, Reds, if you can just try one more time again on the, the link, the video link, and see if we can get you back on. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so see if you can see if you can get a, see if you can get back on the video screen. Um, I'm hearing you here on the audio, but see if you can get back on the video screen. Okay, so um, all right. Well, let's see if we can um, let's let's see. Uh, are you hearing me though? Okay, so you heard me loud and clear. I hope the viewers are hearing loud and clear as well. It's unfortunate that we lost the video signal, but it appears that you've been having some of this problem. But I, I wanted to hear from you the whole issue regarding um, Chris Gale because um, he he um, ESPN Quick Info has quoted Gale as saying that, um, and I and if I can just read that briefly, I will be in Australia one way or the other next year during the T20 World Cup. I'll be there because I haven't been there in some time. The World Cup will be in Australia, so I will be there. You know, it might take some extra effort. Sit in the stands, have a cold one. Well, I assume it's a beer he's referring to and says, hi, guys, I'm here. I ain't leaving. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, Gail said. What it is you really think um, Chris Gail is really trying to say um, Reds? Well, I think he is trying subtly, or maybe not too subtly, to put pressure one, on the board, two, on the selectors. Um, it's, it, it's a very bad precedent um, if there was the pick gale um, not And it will open a can of worms. It will open a can of worms. That's all I will say at this point. If a person on merit cannot make a West Indies 50 over side or a 20 over side or a test side, that person, he or she, should not be picked. Um, and uh, I think you just don't um, give away uh, a selection of for what le level? Just because a guy says, you know, I, I would like to have a farewell game. I mean, uh, they, they, they hinted I'll be in Australia. Um, you know, the proof of the pudding, Michael, is in eating. Gail has been outstanding. No one could question that. But father time goes on. You know, father time goes on, reflexes, eyesight, you know, becomes an issue. But, but uh, um, Reds, but then there will be, you know, and I like to pick your brain on these things. There will be the argument about whether or not, um, how, or, or not whether or not, but how do you say goodbye to these players after so many years? We we saw the example of the the the, the shift around Shanda Paul and so many others who have exited West Indies cricket, and for some they believe that they um, they basically discarded them. You know, in other territories, well, let's say other territories, other cricketing nations, there is a proper, you know, farewell for these players after so many years of contribution to the sport. But in West Indies, it appears that they just discard you. Is it a situation that Gail is buying some time to ensure that he gets a proper farewell? Well, there are many ways of the West Indies board honoring Gail and honoring any player who have come to his end of his tenure and, and may not be able to make the side on, on merit. Um, you know, they could be uh, a special game arranged um, to, to honor Gail. They could be uh, a special dinner arranged to, to honor Gail. I mean, there, there, are, there are many ways other than giving a man um, a West Indies cap. Uh, you know, it, it is not that 
full stop. I mean, you can honor a man um, and by having a, a, a special occasion at Sabina Park, away from a, a national, an actual one day international against Ireland. Mm -hmm. um, going back to, you know, the utilization of players, I saw a comment there from your good friend. Uh, Pastor Stevenson Worm saying persons like Red should be utilized also. And um, then I also had some comments there from uh, Michael St. John, you know, the son of Sir Walter St. John. Walter, yeah. Right. And you were saying, um, you know, bless up to you and love from Grenada family. Uh, you also said that Dennis was the best. My dad was on tour in 1984 and the guys were all fit. He always spoke highly of Dennis, and I, I assume he's referring to Dennis Waite, you know, the, yes. the, the physio. Your yeah, yeah, dad was assistant manager, and uh, he would have had first-hand knowledge of, of Waite and being in the Monens. And, and, like, I wouldn't call a name, but there was a player that Clive Lloyd felt uh, was not, um, you know, working as hard, and he gave Dennis Waite the specific instructions uh, to work with him separately and they would leave the hotel at six in the morning and maybe do a three mile run or a four mile one or uh, do a lot of wind sprints and th things like that um, you know th that needs to be done now okay and then uh donna joseph says i always said that with all of the greats that they that played for the west indies team in the years when the team was feared by many cricketing nations. None of those past players haven't been called up to mentor, coach, and to help in improving players with their game. Um, and uh, Michael St. John comes back, says, he returns to say, uh, Milton Small? Hello? Yes, yeah. No, I would say uh, Michael St. John came back to make mention, well, he, uh, probably the name you didn't want to, to mention. I just realized what it was. But um, <laughs> but Donna was um, um, strengthening your point about the the use of these players in terms of mentoring, coaching, and helping to improve players with their game. It appears that probably uh, West Indies is probably one off, and if we fall in a lot of cricket, the, the few nations that don't really use their, their former players, their former greats, you know, to assist in some way or the other. Everyone may not be a coach, but as you indicated, you know, mentoring, assisting in the development of the players in, in various areas, you know. Um, some of the players, I believe, may have gone on to be, um, you know, good money managers, for example. We are talking about financing and things like that. So, um, you know, why you can't use some of these to help them help the young players in particular you know in terms of their financial um you know financial viability etc cetera, etc cetera. these are the things reds that we have been talking about so it, it may safeguard them into just running after the, the the lucrative ipls and you know and t20 but develop um you know into full-blown cricketers uh, 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 right. Yeah. Hello. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we move on now to the the whole issue of the upcoming series against Pakistan next month, right? Um. You know. Yes, we. You know. Spoke a bit shortly about the um and recently about the, the team itself and um, players being players being unavailable. Uh, making themselves unavailable, and um, as you indicated, um, you can understand um, someone like a Russell, but um, Hetmeyer in particular, and Irvin, Irvin Lewis, I, I, are you really, really surprised that um, two of our youngest, well, I should just say youngest, but brightest prospects in terms of um, West Indies cricket have made themselves un unavailable for that series, right? Yes, um, surprised, disappointed, but you know it's a delicate thing uh, to you know to go beyond that. You you do not know you know why they have made themselves unavailable. Uh, I know people made themselves unavailable for Bangladesh because they figured that the conditions there wouldn't 
uh, would not have been, you know, good enough. Right. Um, but I mean, a lot of people have gone to Pakistan, so I think the the, the, the level there is quite good, and they're being a bubble. But I don't want to go any further on question why they've made themselves a pillar. I, I I I do not know whether it is in fact, um, you know, family matters and, and things like that. So whether they're tired of, of bubble life. I mean, uh, Michael, I've only had three days of quarantine once in Australia when um, the airline bringing me to Perth uh, lost my vaccination. And I had to go into a, a home, a very nice modern facility. Um, and I was quarantined for three days and it, it, it was a very long three days. So I, I am not going to, you know, minimize the, the, the pressure of of um of the bubble and being able to leave the ground and you're back in your hotel room all your meals are served in the hotel you know it's we, we we just have to hope that they they soon will come back and make themselves available but back to the pakistan tour i don't expect us to win if we win great all i i would hope michael is that we will, you know, compete. We will perform well, mm -hmm. right? Pakistan at home, anyway, home side starts off with a, a, an advantage. It's like, it's like in football, you know, you're, you're, you're playing at home, you, you start off virtually with a one nil, a one nil lead. But I, I want to see, because this is really the road to Australia in October. This is the road to Australia in October. And we hope that it's a pity that these players didn't have the experience of the World Cup, which should have helped. We should have sent a younger team. All these young fellas that have been exposed, maybe minus one or two, um, should have had the World Cup under their belt and would have been much better prepared. But um, it starts now. Finally, you know, months, months uh, late it started. We missed the opportunity of the World Cup. But we are, it must be looked at. This is preparation for the World Cup. We'll have a further opportunity to see what the selectors will do when we play England in five T20s um, in, in Barbados. And the selectors must have the World Cup in mind. It's not just about winning, but it's about blooding people, trying different comps combinations that you can arrive maybe at the best team to head for australia don't forget also michael we have to qualify once more well, yes that's why i wanted to there is the um you know uh, um west indies um gone are the days where west indies probably was automatic qualifier no they have to qualify yes well um the sign of the time sign of the times uh, you know, we had to qualify the last time, and uh, we qualified because of a very dubious leg before decision. I, I won't want to say any more, but uh, that, that's the game. You you get some, and, 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 and you don't get some. Mm. Um, but um, you know that that qualification um, might not be a bad exercise because it will give the players before they arrive in Australia a couple of games well under their belt, you know, a couple of games well under their belt. I think the qualifications would be in Zimbabwe once more, if, if I remember well. Yeah. Um, and, and, and talking about Zimbabwe Reds, um, unfortunate for our, our um, female cricketers. Um, I'm certain you may have been following them as well and um, so much looking forward to the um you know going forward winning comprehensively in their first game and you know um outstanding performances all wrong i should say not just the batters the bowlers as well but the unfortunate situation of the, 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 the you know the variant in southern africa and um, the you know tournament has to be called off yes i when i read this morning quite early that the sri lanka West Indies match has been cancelled. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my, my mind straight away went to what we learned yesterday about the new variants in Southern Africa. 
and Zimbabwe is right in the middle of, of, of Southern Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, they obviously have a commitment to get getting the players out. Now you see some countries already stop receiving flights um, from Southern Africa. Mm -hmm. So what will they do? Will they take charters? How, how do they get them home? I, I, I don't know. It's not an easy time for the ICC where you have what, five or six teams uh, in a qualifying situation. Uh, but one of the ease on the ICC is that I think uh, the Western East Pakistan and I think Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka. Yeah. Have, 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 have qualified. So mm -hmm. it wasn't a wasted exercise, although all the teams would have liked to play, to play. all yeah. the matches uh, available, Michael. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's that, that. That's true. Yeah, um, but as you say, it's a bit of ease in terms of the you know for for going forward for the ICC. Uh, but a logistical headache in getting the players out because I think um, from could be Monday. I think maybe the um, the when the in some cases some of the flights the ban on some flights become effective. You know, so um, it it it's it's now a. Um, a rush to get the players at least out um, and as close to home as possible, you know, especially for the Caribbean, you know, where they have to depend on, you know, um, you know, other countries in terms of in transit, you know, that may be a problem on, you know, unlike some other countries, they can probably get a direct flight. So um, I could understand the situation with West Indies and probably CWI may issue a statement on that in, in, in you know in the next day or two regarding that in terms of getting the the, the team you know uh, back to the region. Um, Reds, but let's um, wrap up on the issue of the tour. Um, the, the English they're coming to the Caribbean early next year, 2022, as indicated with the Test series in Barbados, and we have some including um, the um, limited overs um, elsewhere, including Grenada. Um, long awaited, you know, England and West Indies actually started um, during the COVID, um, gave the the, the, the the cricketing world an idea of the whole issue of the bubble, you know. And um, when West Indies went to England, you know, and... Um, and I think it was from that experience, other countries used it and other tournaments, cricket tournaments as well, a very successful, um, you know, bubble. Um, so it's a situation where England now coming to the Caribbean. Reds, what do you foresee? What do you expect? What's your prediction? <laughs> see what, what happens um, in Pakistan first and what kind of side we are going to pick mm -hmm. uh, what side we, we're going to pick I mean I hope the selectors have learned their lesson they seem to be going in the right direction they're picking um, people who um, seem to be um, much better quality of players but I just want to go back to that early tour you talked about, you know, by the West Indies going to England, the West Indies saved the English testing country about 300 million pounds because that, that is what they would have had to pay for the television companies for having no cricket. And because we went, Pakistan came, Australia also came. So the West Indies, um, you know, did England um, human human service and i hope one day england will really <laughs> repay us back mm. i know we're getting an extra test match they've only done to play two they're now playing three so antigua barbados and grenada will hold the three but i feel that england still owe us um more mm. um it's a, it's a, it's a, for them to, to decide we are one of the poorest ICC members. Um, we don't have a lot of industry. Industry is going through a difficult time, especially with COVID. And um, I think the West Indies board and the West Indies team saved the Test and County board because they would have been gone bankrupt mm -hmm. if the West Indies didn't have 
didn't have the the, the um, conviction to go and, and and save English cricket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, Reds, I want to thank you very much. I know we talk a lot about cricket, and you know there's so many other things. I know you, you because again, as I said, uh, even though you um, you know you're deep into the cricket, and as a you know former cricket commentator yourself, I, I, I'm being very cautious about you, the word former, okay? Because um, you know you're 152 not out, <laughs> you know, and you never know. You know, but um, I know you keep tabs on, you know, sports in general, you know, whether it's the World Cup qualifiers, um, probably it's still English Premier League football, you know, and these sort of things. And even um, boxing. That's what I, I really want to ask you about, Reg, regarding boxing in the Caribbean, just as a segue to finish up our program. Because I know you still, you know, um, have that interest in boxing. Um Reds, do you, you know, I know Aiba has been going through quite a bit in terms of restructuring and all these sort of things. In the, you know, the International Federation, you know, things like that. So, but are you concerned about boxing in the Caribbean? You know, years ago, boxing was, a, 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 you know, was a huge, was huge, was big in the Caribbean. Um these days, Reds, not much, and especially in the OECS where, for example, Grenada was um, probably the, the, the mecca of boxing in the OECS. Um, are you concerned that boxing has now wilted away in the Caribbean in particular? Well, maybe boxing is one of the sports that has really been um, struck a body blow. To, to use a relevant term. Oh, knockout. Um, it's, a, it's a contact sport. It's a yeah. contact sport. Aiba has just uh, provided a lot of equipment um, to Caribbean countries, elsewhere too. Um, but there is, um, you know, no opportunity because of, of, of the varying COVID levels uh, to really start a program. You, you can't have uh, any exhibitions, you can't have any, any you tournaments, you can't have a Caribbean championships, you can't have a novice championships. And it's not just uh, among quote-unquote amateurs. The professional ranks are, are, are not active either, you know. It's prefer professional ranks are not active either. Um, you know, I think Guyana has been trying to put on a boat for the last year and have not been able to do that so um, there's very little activity in the professional ranks and very little activity with the, the what used to be the amateur rank because there, there's no um, no amateur in, in, in naming the various associations I mean quite recently in the world championships you had um, you had what uh, a number of professional boxers in the world championships mm -hmm. but until covid covid is um is beaten or covid is reduced to crawl i think sports like the contact sports rugby um boxing mm -hmm. cricket is going on there's some football going on in st lucia but no crowds at, at the same time so the protocols the dressing rooms have to be sanitized and things like that um but it's it's a difficult period. I mean, I envy the fact that you can turn on the TV today and and, and watch um, Liverpool against uh, Southampton record crowds, and tomorrow you will have the same. But um, they have been able to get, get on top of it through maybe the discipline of the population, which we are lacking in in, in the um, in, in the Eastern Caribbean. There's an anti-vaccination drive and. You know, it's not an easy time to get up the percentage that you really need. You really need about 80% mm. of your nation to be vaccinated. Mm -hmm. and, and and certainly with the English coming into the Caribbean in, um, you know, early next year, uh, already they're saying that most likely only vaccinated uh, people will be able to attend the matches. Yes, yes, yes. Only vaccinated people. And I think... Um, you know, 
know, we'd have to wait and see, um, you know, whether whether Barbadians will, will be allowed to enter, and maybe only only who have had the, their two jabs and who maybe have had the booster. The booster right. But uh, that information is is not, is not available. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and right. Finally, the the issue of um, sports and the sports deaths. I know it's very dear to you, especially the OECS sports deaths. You know, just recently we had, um, you know, Mr. Keith Joseph speaking about the CARICOM sports deaths um, as an example. But let's look more closely to the, 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 the OECS, which you are part of. You have been the head of the sports deaths for many years. Right? Are you, I mean, and you have retired. Are you concerned that there hasn't been an attempt to revive the OECS sports desk and the attention being given by sports from the OECS leaders? Well, you know, it's not easy um, to comment if you, you know, don't have all the facts. But um, I think basically, um, you know, the the decision to um, to close the desk, um, you know, and this is me, me, me being biased, was the was the wrong one. I think the desk could have continued because um, economics drives programs, and even before COVID, uh, countries um, in in the Eastern Caribbean within the OECS. Uh, grouping were having uh, financial financial difficulties. The chances of cutting the number of events in half would have been maybe workable, mm -hmm. and uh, simply looking for quality instead of quantity. You know, so you decide well you are going to have. Well, when I left, it was um, 35 events uh, was held in, in 2016. Um, if you reduce that to 15, and some of the events are still going on, you know, you you still have this the OECS swing. Right. You, you yeah. still have um, o OECS golf. And there are a number of things that, that you, you still have. So you could have created a smaller program if the commitment um, was, was there. But you know, directors come and directors go, and there, there's a, a different focus. I was very lucky that I had Dr. Vaughn Lewis as the director who gave me every support and simply said, look, I'm not here to look over your shoulder. You're here to do a job, go and do your job. And the, the private sector, um, the media, and you know how the media helped the OECS program mm -hmm. in Grenada. Right. Well, the same thing existed throughout uh, the private sector. The governments um, were happy that the sports desk wasn't costing because it was self funding. Right. Each government gave $10,000, and that was it. And uh, the the various uh, competitions, the various programs had to be sponsored. Sponsored. But, but, well, uh, the sponsorship came in, the press came in, the sports ministers, uh, direct of sport. I go back to uh, a gentleman you know very well, Greenwich. Cecil Greenwich, yeah. Um, but, but, Cecil Greenwich, I mean, but, but don't you think that there needs to be uh, the political will? I, I know you... You talk about the support from you know the director general and you know the sponsors the media etc but what's about the, the political will you know well some people might argue how can you focus on sport and not focus on agriculture in, in the oecs and health in the oecs education in the oecs you you you, you can see the arguments that, that come again i mean the, the, the economy of the OECS has been hit. Tourism is just about starting. We are just about starting to see about five or six uh, tourist boats over the last week, right? And I think that's the, the similar situation. Um, they, the 
COVID will dictate how many tourists are you going to have in, 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 in the region, how many planes are coming in. Um, you know, it's it, it's not an easy thing to, 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 to clearly say it, it should. Um, but maybe, maybe in a year's time, um, the conversation um, could be raised. And maybe you might like to ask your, your, your own prime minister uh, sometime. Um, he's a man who will come out of a cricket background. Sure, Prime Minister Mitchell will be quite willing to give you a realistic answer whether a small edition of the sports desk can, can in fact continue. Yeah. Fair enough, Reds. I want to thank you once again uh, for the time. Um, unfortunately that we lost the video signal, but um, with technology, still being able to um, complete the program and, and hope probably we can do this sometime again. Um, probably looking back at the um, Sri Lanka and Pakistan series and, you know, oh, wrap up the year. Yeah. Looking forward. Yeah, that will be timely after yeah. Pakistan, after Pakistan. Yes, yeah, certainly. <laughs> what happened this afternoon with us took me back to a test match <laughs> at border. Um, just before the first ball was bowled, um, the, in those days, you didn't have the technology you have now. You had the book of the line. The line, yeah. The physical line had to be run to the box. Right. And it went down. Wow. And I ran down into the press box, dialed the studio, and did the first three overs from the telephone. Mm. Until they were able to, to re reconnect. Because the rest of the region, the, the rest of the region, of course, was, you know, uh, booked their lines, uh, Radio Grenada, um, Trinidad, Barbados, Jamaica, you know, all booked their lines. So <laughs> we had to, had to be sometimes very inventive in life. Yeah. So, so I, I guess as much, it's nothing new to you. <laughs> nothing. This has been nothing well, new to you, you, but you know how to, you know, you know how to paddle the waters. <laughs> well, you, 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 you got to think on your feet. Right. <laughs> yeah. You got to think on your feet. Well, I, I'm happy we were able to overcome it and lead right. to some extent. I'm, I don't know why it went down. Mm -hmm. um, my, my wife uh, sat at a very nice seat, was going very well. Um, I had touched nothing. I'm, yeah. I'm not that technical, but not that stupid. <laughs> but but you loud and clear. but on a serious note, Red, um, based on what the conversation we had, it appears that um, the internet is back up in the region, right? Yes, yes, the internet came back up. I think uh, as they say for the morning. It oh. wasn't back up last night. I went to watch. Uh, the movie um, King um, King William uh, on the development of of the William sisters, and they came in and checked. It was still down, and it was down until maybe early this morning when it finally came up. Okay, well, glad to know. I saw a text um, showing that um, the broadband internet has been restored, but I think that one is particularly from Grenada. I saw it came up on a. Um, from Grenada, so I guess as much. I as... think it was it was Caribbean wide because I have a friend who was trying to reach someone in Saint Kitts. Okay, and they were telling me this morning <laughs> um, that they were just getting a recording. Okay, just getting a recording. Anyhow, yeah. um, you know these things happen, and yeah. uh, you know technically uh, things go wrong, and you know you know well at least it's back on now and. Uh, I hope your listeners are, are, are weren't too put out, or yeah. your viewers were not too, yeah. too put out. Thanks very much, and yeah, and based on the comments, I want to thank uh, Mickey and all the others, Pastor Stevenson Worm, all the others for their um, contribution. Thank you very much, Reds, and um, all the best for the new year. Yeah, we hope yeah. well. Hopefully, this is going to be affected yeah. badly because of COVID. Nobody's entertaining. You know, how yeah. many people would be putting up their lights and uh, <laughs> there's a lot of commercial um, promotions going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know where people will get their money from <laughs> to, to respond. Uh, but we'll talk again, Michael, yeah. after the Pakistan talk. Certainly. Thanks very much, Reds. Okay, okay then. Bye bye. All right, bye. Good okay. afternoon to all. All right, thanks. Okay, then, folks. So you heard it there from um, Joseph Redsborough, um, giving us an insight 
into his views. And I want to thank, um, well, oh, right. Oh, it's Janice. Yes, Janice. Yes, Janice Celestine Reds was saying, um, warmest regards to you, Janice Celestine. I certainly know that name, Reds. <laughs> right? How yeah. can I? Yeah. How can I ever forget that we once put together an OECS team that played Trinidad? Right, okay. So, um, yes. Janice is sending um, warmest regards to you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. One of my favorite persons. Um, great to work with her. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, Huggins dominated uh, OECS um, Netball. Yeah, but, that club tournament. Right, and that was what I, I think when you were talking about some of the sports netball is one that's still on the, the you know the OECS um well you know through the with the sponsorship of the ECCB you know yes yes, yes. that was the that was the best sponsorship the sports mm. has ever got right you know, ever 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 got because they were interested in uh in ensuring that uh, netball which had brought Great relationships in in the early days of, of, of the of, of the OECS, the Leewards and Winwards, you know, the Archibalds of St Kitts and things like that, you know, um, uh, and uh, it, it it certainly and it prepared people on the under twenty three level to get experience. So when they go to the national level, they would have had experience at the under twenty three level. It, it certainly served a, a special purpose. Right. Okay, then. Well, thank you very much. And folks, as I told you, um, when we start to talk to Reds, it's not just cricket. You know, he's first done so many. So we'll have a program where Reds can be able to speak on all these other things, not just cricket, you know, because we still have not explored. We still have to have a program where we can explore OECS sports. As a matter of fact, you know, um, for those of you listening, Reds has um, a book that he has published many years ago dealing with um, sports and development. I, I am suggest for those who are involved in sports as a must read. You know, you get the whole idea of sports, not just in the OECS, eh, but in the Caribbean, as well as his own development in terms of commentary where he started you know a lot of lots of information in it you know and things like that so but um we have read on other programs where you can talk um more about all these things okay thanks very much reds okay and good afternoon to all your people who joined your, your show and here's hoping that the, the information was uh constructive and the information was helpful yeah thank you very much okay then all bye right bye. bye bye okay then folks so you got it there from um respira um live from um saint lucia just on the outskirt of um of uh Grosile, as he will say it you know uh speaking to us live um you know cricket and um you know a little we dabble a bit in boxing and then of lately um netball but certainly we'll have reds that will um give us well we had reds on live on the video feed and then for some reason we lost that um video feed and um but we had him on the audio but as you understood that apparently they had some issues regarding internet in the eastern caribbean in particular um um uh, yesterday you know, and he said that it was restored sometime early this morning, but it seems as if there's some pockets somewhere or the other. But um, it was glad to know that we were able to continue on the audio. We lost the video feed. Thank you once again, folks, for being part of the program. Um, our next program on Thursday evening will be coming live from Charleston in South Carolina. We'll be in South Carolina for our next program. Uh, we should be there for another week or two. And then hopefully back to New York and then uh, back to Brooklyn, New York, and then, you know, somewhere else after. I, I don't have the, the full sh schedule, you know. Um, but I can tell you that um, our next two programs will be coming from um, Charleston in South Carolina. That's on Thursday and um, next Saturday. Folks, thank you for joining um and those of you especially in north america you know belated i should say happy thanksgiving uh you know um certainly and for those of you who conveyed birthday greetings on um, what was last saturday thank you very much as well 
you know, had a very had had a wonderful time because you know on Saturday was my birthday, then um, on the Monday was my wife's birthday, then on Tuesday was our 29th wedding anniversary. So then you know Thanksgiving we had a lot to you know celebrate for Thanksgiving uh, on Thursday, and we did had we 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 had I should say we had a very a wonderful time with friends and family or family and friends yeah anyhow f and f you know thank you very much for being part of the program invitation is yours to join us again on thursday this time at eight o'clock in the evening at eight o'clock eastern time in the evening for another in our talk sports program i'm michael bascom wishing you pleasant weekend mm -hmm.